Oh! Hi there! As you can see down below, this is a top 10 list. If you want me to explain anything about a top 10 list, then you're way underway. Because all I need to explain is my name. Hello there, my name is James, and welcome to Top 10 Loading Screens. Let's just get this list underway, shall we? Yeah, let's get it done. Onward we go! Oh, where's the computer? Okay. Number 10! Ah, Mass Effect 2. What a great way to start off a list. Now the first few things that come to mind with Mass Effect 2 are loyalty missions, collectors, the suicide mission, and loading screens. Because there are a lot of them. Two discs worth, in fact. But it's not entirely a bad thing, because I like the way they look. They remind me of a futuristic gridded blueprint, and sometimes they remind me of Tron in some ways. But, uh, I'll let you visualize them for yourself. Make it seem like an art exhibition. Number 9. At number 9, we have Crash Bash! You know, the one with the monkey thing? It was never in any other Crash game? Moving on, this game's loading screen has nothing really special about it. There's a swirling background and the word loading is popping about like an apple in water. It's not spectacular or anything, I just find it... Groovy. The aqua, turquoise and black background mixed with a big bold orange loading title makes it stick out. Also, the tune that plays is so dang catchy. Listen to it. It just gets you ready for the minigame ahead, and I never get sick of it. Except for that monkey thing. Number 8, woohoo! I think one of my favourite types of loading screens are the interactive ones. And the Dragon Ball Z Budokai series is no exception in that department. Some revolve around button mashing or analog stick practice. But, it's really difficult to choose just one of them in the franchise. So I chose them all! Can you blame me? Yes? No? Well too bad! I haven't got a top 10's rule book. So yeah, I'll just let you look and we'll go forward into the next one. Number 7 Rayman Legends is... Legendary. Let me throw that joke in the bin. Again, there's nothing really special in this loading screen. You control your character whilst waiting for the level to load up, and you might just get an extra heart if you're lucky. That's kind of it. But I love its shadowy aspect, and in each world, the environment is implemented into the loading screens to make them seem different. Sure, they go for about 5 seconds, but it's a good 5 seconds. Number 6 V-Rally was one of those games that I at least played once in my childhood, and I played it a fair amount, even though I'd go for something more arcade like Ridge Racer! But hey, I still had fun with it. So what is the loading screen like? Yeah, another one that would look uninteresting. Honestly, it works well. Imagine playing against your friend for a prize of delectability, and it's really serious. You want to win this race. For your race, you have to wait for this loading screen, and by every heartbeat, the intensity rises, and it's just a loading screen that I like. Thieve. I honestly don't really have much to say about this one. It's just Spyro flying to the next world, but that one tiny minuscule thing that Insomniac Games added is what makes this slot so high up on the list. 
I think I justified my reasoning. Whoa! Here we have Metro Last Light, a very depressing and gritty game. In Metro, you play as Archim, who lives in an apocalyptic Russian wasteland, and the leftover existing life is in the subway tunnels. And throughout the game, Archim is sort of a silent protagonist, as he goes through all kinds of hell fighting off against mutants and different factions. That is except for some minor cutscenes and the loading sections. In the loading screens, there is a subway map that shows Archim's progression through the tunnels. During this, he tells you of where he is heading next throughout the journey. If I'm lucky, our people will be waiting for me at the outpost in the abandoned church. I will tell them everything I know about Pavel, about a test of some kind they're going to conduct, and will continue my way to Oktobraskaya. The Dark One is there. And it's really cool to see how far you've come in the story near the end of the game, but also interesting to hear Archer speak about his experience as well. Even though some of his talks are short-lived, I never felt like I was taken out of the game when a loading screen appeared, which is what I think most games should do nowadays. Number Triple I! Amp free, why oh why are you not loved by many? Amp free is crazy! It is one of the most over the top sequels I've ever played. But hey, that's for another video in the future. All I'll say is, you just need to play it. Or watch the cutscenes on YouTube to see why. And the loading screens are freaking awesome. Sure, you have your normal tips on how to do certain maneuvers, but then you have this kind of stuff. The men and hotties of Amp free, what you eat, whilst playing amp free, top free mythical beasts, amp free recipes, funny vegetables, and lots lots more that I can't even explain. Also, that's a lot of brands for one screen. Hallelujah! <laughs> number two. And at number two it's Ridge Racer! Yeah, I shouldn't need to explain this one, but I could sum up why it is number two. First of all, it's retro. Secondly, awesome sound effects. Thirdly, it doesn't take too long. And fourth, it is playable. And there you go. That was really easy. Damn, it's number one! Twas impossible to not put this at number one. Wanna know my favorite FPS game? Well, it's the darkness, there you go. That's not the point though. Why does this game have the best loading screens? In my opinion, it's kinda like Metro Last Light's loading screens, where we go on this journey with the character we play as, but instead of a journal entry and getting to the next destination, it's very deep. Listen to selling drugs, working side by side with the cops. When I was growing up, the family had codes. We did business. We looked out for the people. I believe we ought to honor those codes. Now, Pauly, he's just a parasite. Wants to bleed me dry. Meaningful. Ever been in love with somebody who is so beautiful and pure, you couldn't bear to show them your own darkness? That's how I feel about you. We grew up together in St. Mary's Orphanage. I guess I'm gonna have to tell you the truth about what kind of scumbag I really am. What the hell am I gonna say? Sometimes humorous monologues from the main protagonist, Jackie Essocato, who is pretty much talking to you, like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Except you can't respond back, sadly. Each loading screen varies Jackie's emotions to certain situations at hand. When you kill for a living, life's only precious if you're staring down the barrel of a gun. Or somebody you care about is. Polly can have my possessions, my life, Anything I own. Anything except you. Anything! And it's an excellent way for us to get to know the character. He'll tell you about his past, what he thinks of people he knows that you'll meet up with in the game. If there's one untouchable in this business, it's Butcher Joyce. You put out a hit on some guy, Butcher flushes his body. No one's ever the wiser. Butcher knows everyone's business. But what keeps him alive is that he never, ever chooses a side. Yeah. Too bad there's a war coming. If these scenes weren't on the game, I would probably be begging for more character development. Anyone who says the subway is dangerous never sat in the back of a yellow cab going the wrong way at 90 miles an hour through the Midtown Tunnel. 
with a guy who can't speak a lick of English, my buddy, Crazy Abdul. So yeah, a list you probably would have never expected. And expect more top 10 lists in the near future. So my name is James and I need to get back to work. Strips on the sword.